good morning, good afternoon or good evening, wherever you may be tuning in from. Hey, if we haven't met, my name is Kelvin Piri. I am thrilled once again to bring content like this to you on YouTube. Hey, before I proceed, please remember to hit that like button, subscribe and smash that bell icon so that you'll be the first to be notified whenever I share content like this. So let's dive into what I want to share with you. This being a new year, I thought, why not switch things up a bit? I love stories and what better way than to share the book I'm currently working on. If you enjoy content like this, please drop a comment in the section below. Just say, hey, we're enjoying this and we want to hear more about this story. I would be more than happy to oblige and share this amazing story with you. We are not deviating from the series we've been running on YouTube titled How to Build in Zambia While Living in the Diaspora. You will find that this story, along with many others, revolves around this series. And hey, what better way to get inspired, motivated and encouraged than by enjoying a story from our ancestral land of Africa. Now, let me delve into the book description or the story description and here we go. The Stranger in Familiar Skin is a captivating narrative that delves into the life of John, a man returning to his homeland of Kalulushi in Zambia after years abroad. This vivid portrayal of a journey home reveals the complexities of rediscovering one's roots and the internal struggle of feeling like a stranger in a once familiar land. As John reconnects with his sister Tawanga and experiences the changes in Kalulushi, he grapples with mixed emotions and the reality of being disconnected from his birthplace. The story intricately weaves a tapestry of discovery, love and loss, reshaping John's identity and his relationship with his homeland. Through unexpected reunions and the evolving landscape of Kalulushi, John's return becomes a transformative experience, marking the beginning of a new chapter in his life. Scene 1. John stepped off the plane at Kalulushi's South Down Airport, his eyes drinking in the familiar sights and sounds of his homeland. The golden African sun cast a warm glow over the bustling airport, its rays dancing through the air, creating a sense of homecoming that tugged at John's heart. The scents of earth and wildflowers wove through the air, mingling with the distant sounds of laughter and chatter in various dialects. The rich tapestry of colors adorned the clothing and market stalls, immersing John in the vibrant energy of his birthplace. The air hummed with anticipation, as if the very earth was rejoicing at his return. As he walked through the airport, John's senses were bombarded by the symphony of a familiarity. The earthy scent of red soil, the vibrant array of traditional attire, and the melodic cadence of familiar languages spoken around him. It was as if he had never left, yet the weight of years spent abroad settled on his shoulders, reminding him that he was a stranger in this once familiar land. John's heart swelled with conflicting emotions, a mix of joy and apprehension as he made his way through the airport. He was eager to reconnect with his roots, yet a pang of uncertainty gnawed at him, reminding him of the chasm that had grown between him and the land of his birth. Amidst the throng of travelers, a figure caught his eye. A woman, her skin the color of the rich African soil, approached him with a warm smile. John, she exclaimed, her voice a melody that resonated deep within him. It was his sister, Tawanga, her eyes brimming with joy and affection. Welcome home, brother, Tawanga said, enveloping John in a tight embrace. Her warmth and familiarity offered a lifeline in the sea of conflicting emotions that threatened to overwhelm him. Thank you, Tawonga, John replied, his voice tinged with emotion. It's good to be back. As they made their way through the airport, Tawonga filled the air with lively chatter, updating John on the changes in their hometown and the lives of their family and friends. Her words were a balm to his restless soul easing the unease that had settled within him since his decision to return. Despite the warm embrace of his sister and the comforting familiarity of his homeland, John couldn't shake the feeling of being a stranger in familiar skin. The weight of the past and the uncertainty of the future hung heavy in the air, 
casting a shadow over his long-awaited homecoming. Little did John know his return to Kalolushi would unravel the threads of his past, weaving a tapestry of discovery, love and loss that would forever change the fabric of his life. John and Tuawanga made their way to the car. A modest sedan that gleamed under the Kalolushi soon. As John slid into the passenger seat, the familiar scent of the car, a mix of leather and the sweet air freshener Tawanga loved it, enveloped him, adding another layer to his sensory journey back home. Tawanga started the car, and they began their drive towards the city. The landscape transformed as they moved, with a rustic charm of the outskirts giving way to the more urban sites of Kaluushi. The roads bustled with life, people and vehicles moving in a harmonious chaos that was unique. So how does it feel being back, John? Tawanga asked, her voice laced with curiosity as she navigated through the traffic. John gazed out the window, his ears tracing the outlines of buildings that seem both familiar and foreign. It's surreal, Tawonga, like stepping into a memory that's both vivid and faded. Tawonga chuckled. That's quite poetic. Kalushi has changed, but some things remain the same. You'll see. Their conversation flowed effortlessly, a mixture of Tawonga's updates about family and friends and John's anecdotes from his life abroad. They spoke about everything and nothing, filling the car with laughter and the comfort of shared history. As they neared the city centre, the transformation of Kalulushi became more apparent. New structures punctuated the skyline, standing as testaments to the city's growth and change. John's eyes widened in surprise at some of the new developments. Wow, Kalulushi has really grown, John remarked, his voice a mix of awe and nostalgia. Yes, it has, Tawanga replied, but wait until you see the city square. It's become the heart of Kalulushi, vibrant, bustling, always alive. The car turned a corner and the city square came into view. The sight of it struck a chord in John. It was here that many of his childhood memories were made and now it stood before him, altered yet familiar. As they parked the car, John's heart was a tumult of emotions. The excitement of rediscovery mingled with a pang of loss for the past that no longer existed. Tawanga sensed his mixed feelings and placed a reassuring hand on his shoulder. It's a lot to take in, but you'll find your place here again, John. Kalalushi may have changed, but it's still your home. With those words, John stepped out of the car, his feet touching the ground of a city that was both a stranger and a friend. This was the beginning of his journey in rediscovering Kalulushi and in finding his place in a world that had moved on without him. As he walked towards the bustling city square, leaving Tarwanga to attend to some errands, the threads of his past and present began to weave together, marking the start of a new chapter in John's life. Little did he know, an unexpected reunion awaited him one that would propel him into the heart of Kalalushi's evolving story. Seen to image, John stood at the edge of the bustling city square, his eyes scanning the unfamiliar skyline. The once familiar streets had transformed and the air hummed with the energy of change. He adjusted his grip on his backpack, feeling a pang of uncertainty grip his heart. It had been years since he left his hometown. And now as he returned, he realized how much the city had evolved in his absence. A voice called out from behind him, breaking through his reverie. John, is that really you? The words carried a hint of disbelief. And John turned to see Mumba, his childhood friend, striding towards him with a wide smile. Mumba's dark eyes sparkled with excitement and his easy grin was as infectious as ever. Hey, I'm Wamba, John said, a smile tugging at the corners of his lips. It's been too long. Mamba enveloped John in a bear hug and for a moment, the years melted away, leaving only the warmth of their friendship. You have no idea how good it is to see you, Mamba said, stepping back to look at John. Come on, let me show you around. You won't believe how much has changed. As they walk through the city streets, 
Mimba pointed out the new buildings that had sprung up, the vibrant street art that adorned the walls, and the eclectic mix of people who bustled by. John listened, his senses alive with the sights and sounds of the city. The air smelled of roasted coffee and sizzling street food, and the distant strains of music added to the lively atmosphere. A sense of nostalgia washed over John as he took in the vibrant scene, but beneath it all, a flicker of unease lingered. This was no longer the city he remembered, and he felt like a stranger in his own hometown. Mumbai's animated chatter provided a comforting anchor amidst the sea of change, but John couldn't shake the feeling of displacement. As they reached a quaint cafe nestled in a quiet corner, Mumbai ushered John inside. The cosy interior was a stark contrast to the bustling streets, and the aroma of freshly ground coffee beans enveloped them. They settled into a corner booth, and Mumwamba leaned in, his eyes alight with anticipation. Listen, John, Mwamba said earnestly, I know it's a lot to take in, but I'm glad you're back. We need you here, especially now. John furrowed his brow, sensing a weight behind Mwamba's words. What do you mean? he asked, his curiosity piqued. Mwamba hesitated, his gaze searching John's face. There are things happening in the city, things that have changed everything. I need your help, John. I need your perspective and your courage. The gravity of Mwamba's words hung heavy in the air, and John felt a surge of conflicting emotions. He had returned to his hometown seeking familiarity, but now he found himself facing a dilemma that tugged at his heart. The city he once knew had transformed, and Mwamba's plea resonated with a sense of urgency. In that moment, John made a decision. He would embrace the challenges that lay ahead for the city and for his friend. The uncertainty that had gripped him earlier gave way to a steely resolve. And as he looked into Mwamba's eyes, he knew that this was only the beginning of his journey in the stranger and familiar skin. The world outside the cafe seemed to hold its breath, and as John and Mumbamba sat in quiet determination, a sense of foreboding lingered in the air. The city was on the cusp of change, and John had unwittingly found himself at the heart of it all. After the intense conversation in the cafe, John and Mumbamba emerged into the bustling city streets, now illuminated by the soft glow of streetlights. The city had taken on a different character in the twilight, its energy shifting from the vibrant chaos of the day to a more reflective, serene mood. John, carrying the wit of Mwamba's revelations, felt a deep need to reconnect with his roots, to find some anchor in the shifting sands of his hometown. I think I need to see the old house, Mwamba, he said, his voice tinged with a mix of nostalgia and apprehension. Mimwamba nodded in understanding, I'll walk with you. It, it's not far from here. Together, they navigated through the familiar yet transformed streets, passing by landmarks that evoked memories of their shared childhood. The journey was quiet, each man lost in his own thoughts. The silence between them comfortable yet charged with unspoken emotions. As they approached the quiet suburban street of John's childhood home, the contrast from the lively city centre was striking. The peaceful ambience of the neighbourhood, with its manicured lawns and the distant laughter of children, was a balm to John's tumultuous thoughts. Yet, as the house came into view, a sense of alienation crept over him. The house, with its fresh coat of paint and modernised facade, stood as a symbol of the inexorable passage of time. John's steps slowed, a cocktail of emotions swirling within him. Mwamba, sensing his friend's inner turmoil, placed a reassuring hand on his shoulder. It's never easy, John. But sometimes, confronting our past helps us understand our path forward. John gave a small, grateful smile and continued towards the house. The sound of his footsteps on the familiar path was a rhythmic reminder of the countless times he had trodden this ground, a younger, carefree version of himself. Reaching the front door, John hesitated, the weight of years and memories pressing down on him. The door opened and the warm, welcoming face of the new owner appeared. 
Her friendly greeting and invitation to enter were a gentle nudge, a permission to step into a chapter of his life that had long been closed as he walked through the house. Each room a tapestry of new lives and new stories, John felt like a ghost wandering through a world that was once his. The stark reality that this was no longer his home hit him with a poignant force. The laughter of the new family. The modern decor all were gentle yet unyielding reminders that time waits for no one and change is the only constant. Mumbamba remained a silent, supportive presence allowing John the space to absorb and reflect. When John paused by the fireplace, lost in a sea of memories, Mwamba's quiet understanding was a lifeline, a reminder that while places change, the bonds of friendship endure. Leaving the house, the cool evening air felt like a cleansing breath to John, a stark contrast to the warm, lived-in atmosphere of the house he had just left. The sky, painted in hues of orange and purple from the setting sun, seemed to mirror the tumult of emotions inside him. As they walked back down the path, John felt a sense of closure, albeit tinged with melancholy. The visit had been a bridge between his past and present, a necessary journey through memories to help him find his footing in this altered world. Mi Enwamba broke the silence as they reached the end of the street. You know, John, sometimes coming back to these places, it's not about recapturing what was lost. It's about understanding who we've become since then. John nodded, absorbing Mwamba's words. They resonated deeply, echoing his own inner realizations. This journey back to his childhood home, though bittersweet, had offered him a clearer perspective of his own transformation and the path he now needed to tread. As the two friends parted ways, with Mumamba heading back to the heart of the city and John taking a moment to gaze at the starlit sky, a sense of acceptance began to settle in John's heart. He realized that while he could cherish his past, he needed to embrace the present and the future it held. With this newfound understanding, John walked away from the suburban street each step lighter than the last. He knew that the path ahead would be filled with challenges and changes, but he felt more equipped to face them. The city, with all its newness and old memories, was no longer just a landscape of his past. It had become the canvas on which he would paint his future. As the night deepened and the stars shone brighter, John felt a renewed connection to Kalalushi. It was a city transformed, yet it was still a part of him, and he, in turn, was a part of its ongoing story. With this realization, he was ready to face whatever lay ahead, carrying with him the lessons of past and the hope for tomorrow. I hope you've enjoyed this first series in this book or story that we are carrying out here on YouTube, A Stranger in a Familiar Skin. And if you do, please remember to give us that like, subscribe and smack that bell and encourage us. And I will make sure that this story keeps on going. God bless you. I'll see you in the next video or podcast.